Boom, 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 boom. A crossover video by Dangerously Incompetent. A boom, 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 boom. I love the way you fire. A boom, 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 boom. I love the way they explode. A boom, 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 boom. Ha, 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 how, how long to reload? Ow, ow, get him off me, get him off me. Come on, reload, reload, reload. Come on, come on. Oh, man. Nearly. I'll get him next time. This video has been a long time in the making because I made this build shortly after I crafted the Avalanche in the big chase season last year. So it's taken me seven months to make this video, so you better appreciate it. And in that seven months, the Avalanche has had a nerf. It receives a lot more damage when you fire point blank now. And it's had a bit of a buff with the new penetration stuff because it's a cannon. And I've had an upgrade of my graphics card and an upgrade of my system's memory. So now I can use NVIDIA's Instant Replay, which should make future videos a lot quicker to make. But enough of all that, on with the just play. It's a straightforward build, we've got the avalanche on the front, the dead man cabin for reload. Oh look, someone's not looking at their minimap. <laughs> yeah, uh, flywheel for the reload, Colossus engine to drive it forward, and uh, expanded ammunition pack, and then hermits on the outside for, for steering and driving around. The good thing about the avalanche is that it does a large explosion that does a lot of damage. I mean, it's a massive shell. It's a huge cannon. Well, it's more like a mortar, really. And that amount of damage, you can pop people, just one shot them, which is very satisfying. Absolutely hilarious. Well, it is from my side. From the victim side, it's probably not so much fun. And with the recent penetration changes, that shell will go through quite a bit of spaced armor before it goes beyond me. In fact, I've noticed I keep on, if I hit people on the side on sort of his spaced armour, it'll strip off a load of armour and not explode on them. It carries on and, until it hits the landscape or something and goes boom. But after that, everything's bad about the avalanche. Oh, apart from its durability. It is like a massive shield of steel if you plonk it on the front of your build and you ram people with it. Oh yeah, everything else is bad. The avalanche is physically big, takes up a lot of room on your build, and it's very heavy, absolutely massive. That much mass at the front of the vehicle negatively impacts the handling. It's got mass understeer at the start of the turn. There's so many times when I'm coming bump into things because I think, oh, I've got space to make that turn, and no, I haven't, so I just ram them. And then at the end of the turn, it it's got massive oversteer because it just the back end just swings out because it's lighter the back compared to the front. So you turn on to your enemy, pointing at the enemy, get the crosshairs on them, and then it carries on turning, <laughs> and it's really difficult to line up the shots sometimes. Now that guy's only got you know the shield barrier shield left, but this guy's still got weapons. So let's psych him out. Let him use. There he goes. He uses up his shot. Now it can close. Uh oh, he's reloaded. Can I finish him before he makes a mess of me? Yes, I can. Hurrah for the killing power of the avalanche. And now the reload time. Ooh, don't get me started on the reload time. This build is using the dead man cabin, which speeds up the reload. I spent a point of energy on the flywheel to speed up the reload, and it still takes so long. After you've shot someone, you cannot afford to stick around for the second shot, because it gives them lo loads of time to shoot you back in return and wreck you. You've got to run away. You've got to drive around some obstacles so they can't shoot you. And by the time you've driven all the way around it, you might have reloaded in time to shoot them again. And finding firing solutions can take so long you end up ramming them, which makes the getaway even harder or even impossible. <laughs> so it's a uh, reload time is a big drawback. The avalanche's projectile speed is really slow, which means you get significant drop-off over the course of your shot. 
uh, it'll fire out to medium range, but you've got it. That's an awful lot of arc <laughs> to get it to go that far. And the slightest bit of mistake in your elevation, get that wrong slightly, and your shot drops short or it drops past the enemy. Even if they're stationary, it's a real Hail Mary to, <laughs> to hit someone at medium range. It's only really worth doing if there's a clump of enemy and they're stationary. So you can aim at that one, and if you miss a bit, you drop short, you'll hit that one. and it, that's that's worth doing just about <laughs> more than one enemy with one shot but if you want to get the hits in you actually want some accuracy you got to get close to the enemy and if you get close to the enemy that means the enemy is going to notice you and damage you talking of elevation the avalanche's elevation and traverse is extremely limited your firing solutions are extremely limited if you want to shoot a target you've got a point of the target which in turn makes you an easy target because you're driving straight at the enemy they don't have to account for your speed or anything just shoot you in the face and if you get engaged in a dogfight and you're twisting and turning the en an enemy with rotating shotguns is just ripping you to shreds even though they're by the side and you just cannot shoot them you can't get away from them far enough to get your nose at them and shoot them the rate of traverse and elevation change on the avalanche is frustratingly slow. You want to shoot that high flying hover, you better raise your barrel up before you make your attack run, because otherwise the barrel won't get up quick enough and your shot will just fly underneath them and you'll miss. And as for dry firing whilst you're driving at speed over bumpy ground, that's another problem. Most weapons in crosshair, you hit a bump, by the time you hit the fire button, the, the muzzle has been moved back onto your target. It's not the case with the avalanche. You hit a bump and now suddenly you're firing over the, your target and you've got to wait for the muzzle to come down, by which time you're in the dip, so now you're pointing at the ground and you've got to wait for the muzzle to rise up again. It really limits your firing solutions and it makes the avalanche quite the trial to play with. Overall, I'd rate this build as okay to below average. You'd think it'd be overpowered with the amount of damage the avalanche can do. You won't run around one-shotting people. Great! But the avalanche has got so many disadvantages, it drags it down to okay. And those disadvantages make the avalanche unpopular. You can buy it off the market for cheaper than you could craft it back in the big chase season when it appeared. But if you can gloss over those disadvantages, it can be a lot of fun. <laughs> you run around and pop people. You shoot some people and they refuse to stick around for the second shot. They hurl themselves into the pit of doom to escape you. Hilarious. That's it for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope it's inspired you to try out the avalanche and its one-shot capabilities. There are points about this build I didn't manage to fit in this video, so there will be a garage inspection video to follow, and then a deconstruction video as well. So, see you soon!